John Mosher. I'm here with the amazing Croker um, band out of California, Los Angeles. How are you doing today? Good, man. Good. Yeah. How about you? I'm doing pretty well. Do you want to um, tell us a little bit about your music and where you kind of put yourself music category wise, maybe? Sure. Um let's see yeah i kind of started the idea for this project i'd say three years ago um during covid i think a lot of it was kind of um like imagining what i would want music if i were to play live ever again to to sound like um and uh yeah so i kind of just started taking i guess this direction which is like uh more deliberately uh dark and um brooding than other stuff i've done not to say the other stuff i've done hasn't been like that but i was just kind of like all right just make this as my north star and and just uh kind of go for it yeah and you definitely have started performing live i think i've seen you've done three live shows since you've started this project is that correct three two three somewhere around there that sounds about right. Yeah. 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 Three, how, three how, somewhere between three and five. I'm not sure. How are those shows been? <laughs> They've been good. Yeah. We're we're just starting. Um I'm really lucky to have a band of of uh people I'm friends with out here playing with me. Um up until now we've been using a drum machine and we just got a drummer, so that's pretty that's pretty exciting. Um and yeah, I mean, we're just kind of hitting our stride, honestly. Like it's it's a uh, it's nothing crazy, but it's just um, just getting a feel for how these songs translate live, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's been fun. I don't know. It's been fun. So you just released a new song on the twenty first of April, called Leah and I. Do you want to take us through some of the creative process through making that song? Was it just made for a live show or? Is there some heart behind it? Totally, yeah. Um, it was it was mostly made right here where where I'm sitting, um, and uh, yeah, most of my songs are I open up Ableton, start playing um, something, pro probably bass, probably bass and and singing for this one, and then just kind of like slowly piece it together. Um, there yeah I, I don't know like thematically there wasn't really like a theme there's pretty rarely a theme until like pretty late in the song for me it's just kind of like following one like clue to the next and and just uh yeah just piecing it together um yeah it was made here i don't i don't know i don't know how else to how else to talk about it um yeah it's a great song i mean i it's the song that I was introduced to you by. It's really a great song. Um, we are playing it here at WCUR FM on our automation now. It is added onto our automation. So um, that's very fun, but let's play it here now on the interview.
a great song. Um, let's talk about your first release, Red Eye, which is an amazing release. Are these songs, um, I understand that they're singles, are they looking to be put onto an album in the future? Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what I'm going to do about that. Uh, for now, the plan is kind of <clears throat> just singles, 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 singles. Um, just because honestly, I feel like, you know, I don't really have a fan base right now. And I feel like it's kind of a good way to get people's attention and just continue building on it. Um, so, yeah, it's just singles for now. I think until we reach some kind of stopping point, And I don't really know when that is. I guess the nice thing about... Um, self-releasing and doing it on the internet is that you don't really have to have any kind of definitive uh benchmarks I, I, i'm just kind of waiting for a moment where i'll be like <clears throat> i guess the dust will clear and I'll, I'll just be like okay now it's album time um but yeah just have a lot of material that's like um done or almost done and uh just kind of hoping to keep releasing stuff you know the hope is that people hear a song and then they want to hear another one and then give them another one um and uh yeah no i'd love to i've actually never made an album really except maybe like in middle school it's probably the last time i made an album but it's it's been a long time i've never really felt like i had like a body of work that um uh deserved an album but i definitely feel like i'm i'm capable of it now it's just kind of like a a waiting game of of when is the right time yeah, that, that certainly makes sense. You touched on a little bit about your dark gothic type styles. I like to call it post-punk, post-punk revival, maybe you could say. Um, looking at bands like Mulkta Doma or Depeche Mode, or Depeche Mode, sorry, those are the bands I look at when I hear the music. What are some of your inspirations to building on this this type of theme that you have or this the sound? Yeah, I um all of those were definitely like um kind of part of the palette that I had in mind um when I when I started this project. But it's funny, I don't listen to a lot of how do you pronounce it? Is it I've always I've always said Molchat Doma. How, how do you pronounce I think, it? I think it's Mokta Doma. I'm not one hundred percent sure though. I'll 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 go with your pronunciation. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, I I remember like I actually don't listen to a ton of them. I don't even I don't listen to a ton of Depeche Mode, but like they're in the world that I'm aiming for. It's kind of just like yeah, put something that will like fit alongside those those artists. But I heard I heard Multidoma, um, probably still butchering that, but I I heard them uh at some point during COVID, like when they blew up on TikTok for everybody and. Mm. Uh, and I just heard it kind of randomly amongst some other songs. I didn't hear it in that context. And I was just like, oh, like, shit, this is really, it, it struck me because I didn't, um, I don't know. I didn't know what it was. It, it was like amongst, obviously, like a lot of other like English speaking songs. And, uh, and I liked just like how distinctly dark it was. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I was like, for a little bit i was just trying to like directly rip them off and i, I still that's probably like coming off but i think uh, i grew up on um radiohead's probably my favorite band um right now i'm listening to a ton of fontaine's dc uh and who else i mean the strokes arrangement wise i'd say the strokes are like an insane insanely big inspiration just like how concise their songs are um i really like um everything to like have an exact place and i think that i got a lot of that from the strokes um yeah i think inspire i forgot what the question was inspirations yeah yeah inspirations yeah <clears throat> i mean in red eye you definitely can hear some strokes in the background maybe not directly but some influence there with the looping and the reverb and all the the sounds that come in the back and it's layered and it's nice i think it's beautifully put together um you hit on tiktok and the grasp that tiktok has on the music industry right now are you looking to take advantage of that or are you just looking to make whatever makes you happy yeah i think um i think i'll probably start posting some tiktoks um i don't uh I'm hoping that it can just be like chopping up music videos. Like I really don't want to do the thing where it's just like how I made this song or whatever. Um, not, you know, 
no shade to anyone who does that like I, I totally understand it's just like it's it's just um it's hard promoting your music and i think like tiktok is just a great great way to do it because it's just this immediate funnel um i guess it just funnels your music to people who are most likely to like it so yeah i think i'll, I'll like um i've been i've been trying to get to it recently actually i just want to chop up these like recent music videos these videos that i've done and um just put them on there and uh yeah yeah Pro i mean TikTok. i'm sure you, i'm sure you'll have great success not to uh demote your music in any way but you certainly have music that would fit in an algorithm on that app on that app so certainly you certainly got something going on there so croaker isn't your only project that you've ever done you also have had um the heck which was with um indie artist malice k but you also did about i think it was four years ago uh, a small project called moth club and i can't find any of those songs anywhere is there anywhere where you can find those songs or do you just kind of have them hidden somewhere in some compartment of the internet that just can't be found yeah they're um they're on Bandcamp. um i uh yeah sometimes it's hard for me to find it because i just forget like the url um but they're on Bandcamp. i think it's uh it's mothclub.bandcamp.com and i think moth and club both have uh <laughs> there's like two h's and two b's so it's moth with an extra h in the club and an extra b um mothclub.bandcamp.com and uh yeah that was like that was another kind of like i was just uh listening to a lot of neil young and i was just like yeah i want to want to make country music or like i guess indie, indie country music whatever it came out to be and uh yeah that, oh yeah and then the heck that was um that was also during covid uh my friend alex malix k, malix k um came uh he was coming up to seattle and um we just made that made that album in uh, in a weekend just kind of like just pumped it out and uh it was so fun I don't, I don't think i've had as much fun making something as i have making that just because most of the time i i uh, work alone and uh i like people you know i'm not an introvert but i think that uh i just realized that most of the time like what i'm trying to do musically requires me to just like be alone um and so yeah it was super fun to not do it that way yeah i mean the production and the quality of the heck was amazing i think there's only one album released by you guys or one ep maybe it is but it's there's a bunch of songs on there and they're very good are you looking to reach back out with Malice K and maybe feature him in your music that you're doing now? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Me and Alex are really good friends. I'm seeing him. Um, we went to high school together. I'm seeing him this weekend, actually, which I'm really looking forward to going back home. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're always kind of just like jamming whenever we get the time to and, and making stuff. Um, so yeah it could happen i think i'm pretty focused on this project right now so um but who knows i think if, if we get together and make stuff if we have enough time then usually something comes of it so now i kind of want to transition we're keeping it on the same page but the importance of connection your i mean obviously we were just talking about malice k alex who you know from back in high school that's an important connection to have especially to grow your project as it is but you also have as your manager um michael or not michael andrew kratz which if for those who aren't listening don't know who that is the drummer for um car seat headrest how is the importance of connection going to like help you as an artist because those are some pretty big names in the music community that you have alongside yeah yeah i know i'm uh lucky lucky to know uh talented people it's great i'm I'm stoked uh i've i also was a fan of car seat headdress um rest for for years before i met andrew and uh and then i met him and and we hit it off like I think both as musicians but also you know we get along I think we have like a similar sensibility about uh life um and uh 
yeah and then oh yeah and then alex grew up with him it's great it's it's great great to know those those dudes um yeah so post-punk we talked about that where you kind of fit but it's a lot of um different areas of the world where that music is mainly popular and it's not really seen in the states i know some canadian bands that are pretty popular as well as some bands over in europe but i think you're the first that i know of that's taking this gothic approach from the united states how do you fit in how do you fit with that style of music here in the states and how do you hope that transpires to who you are as croaker um I don't know. Yeah, I think it's it's cool. I do I do feel like uh, there's a little bit of a scene here in LA. I don't I don't think I've I've met um, a ton of people that are doing it. I know it's out there. There's definitely like a scene for it here. So I'd like to um, meet some of those people more. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't I don't feel like I'm doing something super different. I feel like yeah, maybe different within like um, certain scenes, but. Um, yeah, I think I think I just wanted it to not be a, a um, chorusy guitar and dreamy vocals. I I feel like th there's just like a lot of that, and I wanted it to not be that. I think like that's that's the main way that I think of it is different. But other than that, I don't think it's that different. Like there's like a lot of uh, there's a lot of different stuff going on. I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of making my thing and <clears throat> following my intuition, I suppose. That's what you need to do sometimes. One last thing, and then we can wrap up here. If there were a chance that you could go back in time, could you give us a few artists, either dead or alive, that you would do a show with? Hmm. Um, uh, it's intimidating. Because, I mean, once you, know, once you like them too much, it feels like uh, that's, uh, it's intense. But, I mean... Um, Fontaine's DC is is one of my uh, favorite bands right now. I think it's definitely a dream of mine to play a show with them someday. Um, the same with The Strokes. Uh, um, Radiohead are insane. I, I think that I, I feel like a, a little bit too um, too humbled, and they're they're kind of like gods to me. So I it's like uh, I just can't even I can't picture it, you know. But um, yeah, those. Those are those are the ones. All right. Well, Kanye, my... Kanye would be interesting. Con I guess, Kanye I would I be very I, interesting. <laughs> I can't. I, yeah. I mean, I obviously don't agree with the what what he stands for, but I'm I'm a huge fan of his music. Sometimes you got to separate the uh, art from the artist. I suppose you could say, right? Yeah. So, do you have any final remarks for us here? uh no thanks so much for having me man i really appreciate it um yeah this is my second interview ever so um it's nice nice of you to have me on and uh yeah i enjoyed it yeah of course it's always nice to hear new music always happy to have new artists on um your your genre of music i keep on referring back to that but it's definitely something that i have not had on the show yet and i'm excited to have a variety of music added onto the show. My name is John Mosher. This was Croker, and you were listening to Mosher's Records. Thank you so much again. It was a pleasure. Thanks, John.